and, and now we're going into research technology and I'm very happy to, to present you Arash Haikani and Dick Nultas and also their uh, uh, Juho Salminen. Um, they have developed a tool which might help you to really nail down your literature review. Uh, the tool is called Nails, is that correct? Yeah. And uh, I heard uh, um, um, Arashi's and Anki's presentation or the demo at LUT Graduate School Conference and I was so impressed uh, that this might be very valuable tool for, for our researchers and I asked if you could come and present the, uh, and demo your, your tool also at, at LBM Wednesday, Wednesday Coffee and so here they are and let's give a warm round of welcome applause to Arash and Anki. The stage is yours. Thank you very much, Anna. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I actually brought some delegates from Iran. It's like baklava. If you like, you can try it. It's over there. So let's start uh, right to the point. It's about doing literature analysis systematically. Uh, what we come up with is an optimized way of doing literature study in a very uh, systematic way. So it's kind of away from all the hassles and effort you happen to experience when you are doing it for your own. Uh, definitely, literature study is something we need to do uh, as a PhD student, as a uh, like a very uh, like top-notch researcher. Whenever you want to enter to a new discipline, you need to figure out what are the most uh, core uh, and nice piece of papers in that particular uh, literature. That's why this thing really matters because if you do, if you wanted to do it manually, it takes so much time. The experience which I had. And uh, fortunately, I was in our IT department that time. There was this moving happening in the whole university. And uh, I had uh, my dear colleagues like Auntie and Yuho around me. And so we decided to automize the whole process in a way that how we can do it more easily and in a very uh, in a automatic manner. So I, I will just, you know all about the literature studies and stuff. I will just show you what, how, how it works. Uh, the first thing you need to do is think of a query like what you want to search for. Uh, it can happen as a very simple word, and uh, you can have a, a, always a complex version of a, a query. Uh, but uh, I will start with the Web of Science. It's uh, still one of the most dominant uh, databases in, in the field, uh, uh, indexing millions of uh, articles. And uh, the good thing about it is that it has additional information about the literature, like citations, uh, like this sort of metadata, which we can really benefit from when we are doing this uh, literature analysis. analysis. So uh, I will start right away by thinking of a query of my own, the thing which I concern. It's about entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship research. So uh, I will simply type entrepreneur. First of all, you need to go to the Web of Science, this uh, core collection. I'll show it to you how you can uh, go there. It's, it's just a, a simple click. You have to just switch it to the Web of Science core collection. This is very important because this database has the, uh, the uh, metadata and this uh, citation data, as I explained. So uh, by going there, uh, the only thing you need to do is to just enter your uh, query. It can be as simple as that, like what I have here. And by selecting the title, I'm looking for entrepreneurship-related material. So that's why I have this entrepreneur and the star in front, which kind of includes all the entrepreneurship, entrepreneurial, and this form of uh, complex way of expressing entrepreneurship. So, and that, then by just clicking search, uh, definitely we will uh, see some results. You can refine it to extreme, what type of uh, material you are more interested to. So here I just try to just keep it very simple for the sake of this uh, uh, demonstration. And then uh, I, I just looked at for articles. And uh, as you can see, well, we have, uh, Nine, almost 9,000. I'm kind of surprised because I searched the same term last month and it was something about 8,000. So you can see how drastically it's growing uh, this field of research. So, uh, well, we have time cited as one indicator of uh, somehow knowing what type of uh, literature we are looking at and some, some proxy to figure out which one are more important to read. Uh, like this time cited, it's very good actually, but as you can see, the papers are very old. Uh, from 2000, 1989, 
again 2009090 from 30 years ago so uh this is a good indicator but th this is not enough like most most of the time we we will bump to very old papers in the field so that's why we actually created nails it will look for additional uh, data into the literature and come up with a no, uh, a new ratios which can help us to decide uh, from uh, which articles or uh, which type of literature it's good to start to do the literature analysis. So from here what I need to do is to just download this data. You can do it by save it to other formats from here and then save to other files format. And then uh, by default, you're allowed to download maximum 500 records each time. So imagine if I have some 8,000 uh, records, I have to repeat the task like uh, 17, 18 times simply by putting like 1 to 500 and then 501 to 1,000 and so on and so forth. And make sure to select the full record and the cited references. This is where we have all the citation data, which we will uh, analyze later. And then uh, the file format need to be tab delimited. So pretty much that's it. You will start to downloading the data, but for sure I'm not going to do it. It's like 18 times. I have uh, already downloaded the data somewhere here. So as you can see, these are all the datas. And when you will download your data, it should somehow look like something like this. The only task you need to do is to just compress the files in a zip format. So either you are in Windows, you know how to do it by just clicking and uh, compress and the Mac is also uh, as simple as that. So just compress and then you will have a file like this. And then uh, you need to go to our servers and the, the tool we actually have it there. So no software need to be installed. It's just a, a cloud based uh, uh, a cloud based tool. What you need to do is to just uh, type Let's do it Google friendly, like if you type my name and then uh, uh, literature, you might, although I put it bad, but, or even let's try my last name. Yeah, this is a nails project. We have a website for it uh, with the full description of what it actually does and then uh, more references, even we published the paper, so please uh, cite it when you use it. Uh, and then uh, some simple instructions and the codes are also in a GitHub, so if you want to contribute, you can also have the codes uh, freely and uh, work on that. And then uh, there is our online analysis server, which uh, when you go, it's again, very simple form. Uh, you need to like type a name for it, the organization and the email is also good if you put and then uh, choose the file which I'm going to look for the zip file and then uh, start the analysis. You can also put, put your email because it's a, a, a queue based server. It won't crash if 100 people uh, access at the, at the time but when you have your email there you will get a notification when the job is done. So this page will, uh, you should keep this page open and you will see the result here. But uh, as long as the data is a bit big and we, we, are, we are short on time, I already uh, get the data and it's, it's, it's loaded here. So we will proceed with this one and hope that by end of the presentation, we can see the results also instantly. It's online and it's doing it right, right now. So uh, as you can see, there are the publication years. This is all the amount of records I, I pushed into the a tool so the publication years are growing always not not so surprising and then uh, the nice parts is like the important authors you can see uh, which authors are more productive by some ratios uh, you can figure out the name of them and then uh, which authors are more cited and then uh, important publications also very nice where you can kind of figure out which journals are very active in publishing regarding your uh, topic of concern and uh, these are the more popular ones and you can also find the most cited pub publications like which journals get more citations about that particular keyword you first searched for in Web of Science. And then important keywords also very nice because uh, uh, you, you, you kind of figure out uh, what to include next because this is based on the, uh, uh, the abstract analysis. So uh, these are the most uh, top popular keywords happening in the literature. So you can add, uh, you can refine your query based on these uh, brief uh, uh, results, like what to include, what to disclude. 
And then, uh, yeah, this is my favorite part where you have these important papers, important literature among that big 8,000 uh, pile of documents. Uh, and what we did, uh, and in the novel thing here, is we calculate the, the new ratios here, like in degree, page rank. Page rank is an algorithm which you, Google also uses, and it actually looks for uh, the quality of links. So if you imagine the whole literature as a, as a network and each paper is a node and the others are actually also are node and they are connecting to each other, connected to each other by edges. So the page rank actually looks for the, the number of edges coming and the quality of that. So, and also we have the in degree, it's like number of uh, articles citing one particular uh, ar uh, article. So, uh, and this is much different than only the time cited. For example, as you can see, we have this uh, number of uh, cited papers for one particular record. It is like 591, but uh, it's lower. It's much lower than uh, the one next, but because of the higher num uh, in degree number, it's ranked uh, higher. And uh, yeah, you can also find the brief information of the literature you pu pushed in into the system, like by the abstract, the DOI number, which by the DOI number, technically you can go. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Well can you, can you explain a bit more? Because I didn't get what's the difference between time cited and in degree. Because, well, you do a social network analysis. In degree is, you know, in, in a side facing network, mm -hmm. it's time cited. So, what's the difference here? Because the difference time is typically higher now in your, in your analysis. Yeah, well, the difference is, for example, when you are looking at the accumulated time cited, which is indicated in Web of Science, and you have a particular keyword, imagine entrepreneurship. Uh, what I'm doing by the keyword entrepreneurship is I'm kind of isolating that field. I'm looking at within articles, yeah, within within the within your records because by default people from zoology are also citing that paper, and I'm excluding that. So it's another proxy to somehow figure out which papers are more reputable inside that community. Yeah. Within a specific field. Exactly. Yeah. Literally, and, that means. And more specifically, within also this data set. Mm. Yeah. So it kind of if you have a, if you don't have a complete data set, data set of entrepreneurship literature, then that's probably not a very good proxy of how much cited within because it, it's limited into that data set. So you, it's kind of the assumption is that you have a representative data set of entrepreneurship literature. Yeah, it's, that's better to to do it that way. Yeah. and then. Uh, these are the recommended paper, top 25 uh, on that pile of uh, articles. And also these are the, uh, the papers which are not included in the initial data set. So mainly these are some things which you need to consider in your next search and iteration. These are not in the record, but they, they're kind of having a high number of in degree and they were somewhere in the references of those papers which were like very important. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. And I will uh, ask Auntie to come and show the visualize and okay. nice graphs. So Thank yeah, you, that's Ash. my part. So we have statistics, but one of the original motivations for this paper was that uh, um, the reviewer for my uh, systematic mapping study said that my review was not um, exciting enough. And I was like, what is this systematic mapping studies by their definitions are not excited or exciting, but then I thought that we need more colorful graphics and animation and stuff that will make the reviewer think that, gee whiz, this is truly exciting <laughs> stuff about statistics. And uh, Ooh. really electrifying material. Uh, and what you basically do, you import the data, you press render, and it gets you all the data. And let's zoom in. And what you would get is the list of cooperation between all of the authors in here. And you can highlight the most important guys in red. And uh, not so important guys in light blue. So we get a couple of important guys. I'm not an entrepreneurship researcher, so I'm not recognizing a couple of these names, but does Mike Wright, Erko Autio, Dean Shepard, Donald Kuratko say anything to you? Couple, couple names. And uh, the next level you can, for example, do is to uh, 
do this is to group by universities, for example. Also, you can see that which universities or conferences or so on have um, like um, related publications. So you can see how the network of science has built. And uh, this is a different way to characterize the network of science. You can browse Julkaisu <laughs> Forum, but they are um, general quality ratings or general importance ratings and um, they are not specific to your field of research. So if you want to see that uh, Dean Shepard or someone has uh, published in these forums and his people who work with him, uh, where they have published and how they relate to each other, this is another way of uh, visualizing the field. So we have a video demo of how to work this thing on uh, our YouTube channel. I'm happy to show you actual demos in a working installation. I have a previous proof that I, you can install this and it works on LUT um, provided PCs and also my Mac at home. So, uh, Any questions uh, relating to this or, or point of discussion? Please go ahead. Yeah, so uh, your software gives as an output the Excel files needed as an input for Gephi. Yes, it's um, Gephi doesn't really do any, well, it does basic analysis, like it can count in ICRI and other things, but it's uh, most powerful feature is doing these really uh, beautiful graphs that help you understand the connections, because we could, we, we could output a matrix, but, and, but it has a lot of numbers, in a very packaged forms and people are not very good at like um, understanding those at an uh, instinctive level or conceptual level. It's open source, yeah. so you are allowed to download, change it and redistribute. Because cool. yeah, we have this data set of uh, network analysis of uh, EU-funded project for the last 15 years, mm. so it, it's a big graph. And, and you see that later on that cannot you know, handle that. But, you know, yeah. yeah, it's uh, I think uh, this has been successfully able to analyze, uh, visualize some thousands of nodes at least, but um, you have to usually, if you have a really huge graph, you have to filter before it makes much sense. Yeah. Um, yeah? The part of the software, is there any way of set some criteria for selecting an article? I mean, because what you have done is uh, use the word of knowledge, mm -hmm. um, search engine, to get some, some articles and some statistics. But is there any way of, okay, taking this, uh, this list of articles, set some criteria, and that it automatically gives you the outcome? For instance, I want only the articles that are empirical, not theoretical. Or is there any way of doing something like this? Well, actually, that uh, level of filtering isn't available in Web of Science. Mm -hmm. So uh, I really doubt how you can categorize the articles here, theoretical, if they're empirical. Uh, but the very obvious ones, like if it's article, conference one, proceeding, book chapter, these things mm -hmm. you can you can narrow down pretty much easy. Yeah. You could do a keyword search, but uh, these keywords are not standardized. So some people who do empirical studies might or might not. Yeah, that is why I was wondering if in your software uh, there is something related to this that could help to, to do this. Because yes, I know that in work of science and also Scopus is quite difficult to, to do this automatically. It takes a lot of time to do it manually. Yeah. Is that possible? It, it, it's a it's a uh, interesting field of text analytics, and I'm sure that computer could be trained to recognize those. But I think the difficulty is getting the training data sets because your mm, web of science doesn't allow you to mass download full articles for um, machine learning. You'd have to do it by hand. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in the end, it have happened so that I 
resubmitted into another journal and wrote a separate paper about this uh, analysis system. Happy ending. Yeah. But yeah, now we were able to submit, uh, submit more papers because of this, so win-win. And uh, two published, well, one uh, doctoral thesis and one published journal article has uh, used this software, so it must have some validity. And maybe as an addendum, GEPHI is also excellent software so for visualization. Is that um, in addition to our software, that both have uh, published articles. If uh, you want to use our system, you don't have to prove it works, it has already published somewhere. And the same applies to GEPHI, it has uh, citation information on all of the methods. Like if you push this button, you get results, but it also shows. Uh, citation for the algorithm that this and this guy has proved that it works so that you don't have to prove in your paper that this uh, visualization method or uh, uh, whatever is accurate enough. Okay, thank you Arash and Antti for sharing this valuable tool with us. Thanks. Thanks.